Oh, I. So hello, my name is Mandy Moore and I am the face behind Red Island Fiber. I live on Prince Edward Island, the smallest province in Canada, um, in Atlantic Canada, which we're right now having a freeze snap, like just cold snap, unbelievable. Um, yeah, my and we, since we're an island, the moisture, uh, my boyfriend went out last night to take garbage out. And when he came back, he didn't have gloves on. He opened the door and he, the, his hand was starting to freeze to the door handle. It's that yeah. cold with the moisture levels. So minus 45, I think was the last we saw. So some said minus 47 and there's a lot of Islanders without power. So it's been quite the time. If there's anyone else from Atlantic Canada, I'm sure you're going through it. I hope you're doing well. So last night at the pajama party, we were talking about ice dying. And I thought, why not run outside when we're done and try it? I've never tried it. So I had all my colors that I'm using for the Canada games. And this is what I ended up with. It's still wet. So we'll just kind of twist it up quickly. So you can kind of see. Mm -hmm. So it is pretty fun and it's got some where the blues have broken. There's a little bit of purples coming through and yeah, it's, so it's mainly greens. Oh, there's even a little bit of orange. Where is it? Right there, a little tip point. So it is quite fun. I'm gonna take a picture while I'm kind of talking along. So, and just put it up really quickly because if anyone wants it, you guys will have first choice. Um, so there's two of them. And they do look like they're pretty even across. I just did two because I wasn't sure how it would work or what would do. So, but yeah, it's kind of fun. And it's something like, you know, I don't think you'd ever duplicate because I'm just chucking on the dye on the snow and then the snow do its job. That one looks a little bit more, but it could be just, there's more white showing on the outside. So, that is that. <coughs> Something else I'm going to have are some locks. These locks come from our South Shore up east called White Sands. And it's a mixture. They're kind of like a chocolate brown with some blacks and creams going through it. It's a mixture of, um, this is a mixture of Shetland, Romney, Blueface Lester, Wensleydale, Wensleydale, and it could be other stuff as well. It's just, uh, there's a bunch of sheep on the island, different people have them, that came from, her name was Lorna McMasters, and she used to dye yarn, and she created a breed specifically for her to mill and dye and sell. So that's what these sheep are from, and then they have been mixed with other breeds as well. So they are about six inches long. So I will put those up so it will be locks like this and it will be a hundred grams. They're all clean as well. <laughs> you don't have to clean them and you can spin them or you can use them for felting and it will be a hundred grams for $20 for these ones. They'll all be that. The next ones I have are again, these are another part of Lorna McMaster's breed. And these are more of, these are more of what she originally had. Um, 
it feels a little softer. It's got a little bit more crimp. Let's see, can you see kind of that one? And these were horrible to clean. The lady that has these, the sheep are just, she's got them in like mainly a mud part. Mm. Like it's kind of heartbreaking, but they do get out to grass, but then she takes them back up into the mud. So if I hadn't realized how dirty they were gonna be to clean, I probably never would have bought them, but I bought them when I was first learning and the top ones look clean. So these have had many, many washes, but you will still see things that have to, you'll have to break them apart and there'll be lots, if you have a carter that will come out or you'll see it, but they are clean. It's just all the vegetation but you can even see on the tips, like, well, it's sun, uh, sun bleached. And I wouldn't even be surprised if some of it is just stained with our island mud, but. So that is that one. And now this one is more of a, it's again, part of Lorna McMaster's breed, but this one has more of the Shetland in it. Uh, I, ha I have wool that's 100% Shetland and this is very, you can see the crimp there. It's very similar to the Shetland. Actually, I think it might even be a little bit softer than the Shetland. Um, but they are all soft, but they still are the rustic breeds. So, and all of them will be 100 grams for um, $15. And I have lots of each. So I'm just going to put them up with probably four pounds each because there is quite a bit. And yeah, so that will be going up. Another thing that I have on my site that was new, um, the last show are these darling stitch stoppers. The only reason I'm selling these is because I was away at a fiber festival. And if anyone's been to a fiber festival, you know, the vendors there, there might be no one, cause I don't go to really big ones, just the Atlantic provinces. There might be no one there for a few seconds. So I'm knitting for a couple of seconds and then someone comes and you're just kind of throwing your knitting down. Well, I was losing all my stitches. So I went over to another table. It was a very, very small fiber festival and another table had these for sale. They were actually, um, they were actually $15 is what I paid. I thought, oh my gosh. Anyway, it's all that I could find at the fiber festival. So I bought them and she told me the lady that does wholesale is here on the island. So when I got home, I had to reach out to her because for the rest of the day, all the way home, six hour drive, I didn't lose a stitch. I put them on and it was a double sided knit. It was uh, Lisa K. Ross's, her last um, mystery knit along. So I had double stitches at the time on. So the needle was at the bottom and I had another needle at the top knitting. And I was losing my stitches constantly, but all the way home, they stayed on, they stayed on both, they stayed perfect. So I swear by them, I love them. Um, <laughs> and anyone I talk to that has tried them, loves them too. And they're so cute, like look at these little avocados. And you got the balls of yarn. You got the little foxes, like who doesn't love a little fox? And there's sheep. So there's different ones. They do go fast, um, way, way faster than I imagine. Every time I get them in, they sell out again, little llamas. And I just put a whole bunch on my site, getting ready for this fiber festival. And before I knew it, they started selling out. Like I had, I had them here because I have to still package these 
like I had three sets of those and they were gone within the first hour. I am getting more of these. She's got them on order. So she knows as soon as they come in that I am getting, I'll probably get about 10 sets this time because they just flew out the door. I sell them for $10 each. Um, I am given a discount at for anyone. Uh, it's going to be 10% off, but these are not included because by the time I pay for shipping and give you 10%, I end up losing money. I didn't realize that. I gave, um, someone had a 10% off and she bought a few of these. And by the time I shipped, I got them ready and patched them up to ship and got the shipping label. I lost money. So that's why the 10% isn't on these because I sell them for $10. I'm not making a whole lot of them. And I just wanted to keep them as reasonable as possible. So uh, there are still, I do still have quite a few. Um, now, as of yarn, I have a few different. Uh, this is my, this is called, oh, no, 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 no. And it is 80% eco-processed organic merino and 20% nylon. And what that means is it's organic merino to begin with. Uh, it's not just merino. And it is the processed, it is super washed in a sense, but not as heavily as your normal super washed uh, yarn. So you probably have to be a little bit general with it, but what that means is it doesn't have as many chemicals in it, but it makes it a little bit less resistant for um, felting as the non-super wash. So it's kind of in between. You get a little bit because you're still holding down some properties of the non-super wash, but not so much of the super wash where you can, a lot of people I know just throw their socks in the washer and throw them in the dryer. I don't, I hand wash everything. I, I prize everything because everything takes me so long to create and the cost, I, yeah, I hand wash everything. But with dyeing, I have what's called a panda and that's why these are fairly dry. Like they're still wet, but they're fairly dry because a panda spins the water out of it so fast. So I'm lucky that way. So I do that with all my knits. So it doesn't take long to dry. So uh, 115 grams of my fingering in this is 425 yards and it's $32. I, how soft is your organic? I, I want to say it's almost silkier than the non-super walk. I, or then the super wash, just a second. Do I still have, here's Marino, just the super washed. So this color is cranberry thyme. And do you know what, if I had, and a lot of times I can tell my skeins like your blue face Lester, I can tell them by feel as most indie dyers, once you've been doing it for long enough, you're gonna learn the feel. And I honestly don't know if I could tell the difference between the two, um, but this is the eco-processed organic merino, and this is just the superwash merino. Both have, of course, the knuckle on. This has 25% nylon and this is 20. So there is a little bit different in content, but yeah, you wouldn't notice difference with um, feel. But as I said, uh, the non-super wash, like with the super wash process, you do lose, you're gaining the ability to wash and dry. I never do dry, I never recommend it. <laughs> I never recommend washing, but chances are you're gonna be okay. Whereas the non-super wash, you can't. But the other benefits of non-super wash is it is warmer. It has more of a resistant, like rain resistant. Um, oh, I know there's lots of other benefits. It's 
I find it has a nicer stitch definition because it grabs. It doesn't when you wash it and it's wet and you take it out. A non super wash isn't going to like I have one sweater after I washed it the first time to block it. Um, my arms when I held it out and I didn't realize but one of my arms was hanging down as I was taking it upstairs to um, lay flat to dry and that arm stretched just coming up the stairs running up and having it kind of wet it stretched so when I held it up to me it was down to my ankles like it was I'm it was that was a commercial yarn and it was just yeah I've never bought I never bought that yarn again that was before I started dying for myself um but it was just a super wash merino but yeah and it was a commercial name not a real popular one but so I do still have some of the just super washed but I won't be getting any more of that in everything is this eco process because I have fallen in love with it and I'm switching over my DK is going to be that and so is my worsted I haven't ordered the worsted yet but I have a bunch of my super or of my eco processed organic merino in my DK which again is $32 most of my yarns are $32 I try to keep it and I'm keeping my I thought a little bit of change my prices because everything has changed since COVID the cost has in the last year I found has really like my citric acid went from $10 for five kgs to $32. So, but what I have done is I upped the cost of shipping and I upped my minimum cost for shipping to kind of make up for the price. So, cause I was paying more in shipping too. So this way it's going to equal in shipping. And yeah, for now I'm going to keep my prices low cause I know everybody's having a hard time it's not the best economy so we'll keep it low for now because I am just a small indie dyer I'm not doing this as a business to make. uh the reason I die is that's so funny when you say that um I got into knitting actually back in 2015 my psychologist told me to try it I used to be an avid quilter and hand quilting was kind of my joy, my relaxation. Like if I was stressed, it was the hand quilting I'd go to. And I had a really bad accident and I fractured quite a few vertebrae um, from my C's to my T's in my upper back. So arm movement, there's days when I can't move them, but I needed something. And he mentioned knitting, he had, great um results with other uh patients he told to knit so I started knitting and of course then I went right down the rabbit hole to I now own three Angora rabbits um so yeah it's and I started dying and I love being an indie dyer because it enables me when I'm feeling good because there's a lot of days I have a normal you look at me, you're not even going to know there's anything wrong. And I can go down and I mean, I couldn't do it all day long, but I can go down for two or three hours and I'm okay. And that's what my back can take. So yes. So long story short, that's why I'm keeping my price at $32 to kind of help out for now. Um, some indie dyers have started putting them up and some have kept them the same. And for now, it's staying the same for me. So everything I have, you can get a price point of $32. And that's basically what I carry is all your main just Angora or Angora uh, Merino and nylon or just 100% Merino. I have the odd ones like this is 75% Merino, 15% cashmere and 10% silk. So I do have some of this. I just dyed a whole bunch in Island Blueberry that will be going up on the site whenever it's dry. It's still wet downstairs. Um, and it is a really nice, soft, luxurious base. <laughs> um, and this is called Country Rose because when it came out of the dye pot, it reminded me of my grandmother's dishes, Old Country Rose. That was the first thing I thought of. So. Um, 
This is one of my favorites. This is called Just a Trollin. And it remind me of kind of like city lights, but also like a troll with the pink hair. So that's where just a trolling came from. And it's a really fun color. I'll show you what it looks like knit up. So that's what it looks like. And there are some more white aspects too. That's just depending on where it is but yeah it's 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 one of my favorites so uh another one that i have this came from i was playing peekaboo all day with my granddaughter and when i got this out of the dye pot i don't know it just reminded me of peekaboo like the little her little face peeking up because we i have gray pillows on my couch so that's what it reminded me of and that's this here. And it's a nice, light, easy going color. So, and it's like a flesh tone with your darker and lighter gray and your white. So it's saturated, but not too saturated. I have lots of grays. There's, I've got five of these right now. I had actually dyed them for a sweater but I never got around to making it. And this is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. It's 115 grams. It's my bulky chunky and it, and I am getting pretty good right there. I am getting pretty good colors. Like I, um, I tried to get the light earlier so it would reflect more so the colors when I held them up like this than me. <laughs> Anyway, um, and it's $32. So there are five of these. And I have a couple of other ones. I did a sweater out of this for my granddaughter. It's again the super washed. It's called Candy Kiss. And it just reminds me of little kisses. When that came out, that's an older colorway. I've only got one of this left. This was a collection I did for the PEI Fiber Festival, which never happened because we had Fiona. <laughs> so um, this was called Little Pond and it's Little Pond is where my boyfriend's family is from. And it has all the blues because the ocean, because out his window, you can see the ocean. It's got the odd little speck of yellows and it's got pinks where the blue broke. Um, yellows because one of them broke like that so there's different not sure if you can totally see it not a lot of that though but so it just reminded me when it came out a couple of little spaces where there's little touches of green but not much it's mainly blues and the white and yeah it reminded me of looking out the window at the uh wildflowers and the ocean so that's what hence little pond and there's only one of those left oops oh this one i showed you is 50 shades of green i remember someone asking me why 50 shades of green 50 shades of green because there's probably well there's not 50 different colors of green but there's quite a few colors that go into making this one there and that's kind of what it looks like this one's very close to it, but it's called sea glass. There, and that's really close to what it looks like. And both of those are DK and I have six of the 50 shades and four of the sea glass. Again, DK, this is my passion. And I think there's a picture of it online where you can really see all the colors of purple and it just reminded me of I don't know passion so it's a really pretty color knit up um there's a picture with my granddaughter when she was a newborn in a purple sweater and that was knit up in this only it was uh MCN and I have some gray in my DK too so I have lots if you wanted to do like a color work sweater 
sorry, I'm trying to reach them all. I do have lots of the sparkling sienna. I love sparkles. Can't, you can't go wrong with sparkles, I don't think. <laughs> anyway, so this color is called Itelia. And yeah, that is pretty close right there. And it's 84% superwash merino and 16% sparkling uh, stelita, stelina. Oh, my. And it's again, 425 grams. Um, I'm pretty sure all of, yeah, all of my fingering is 425 grams. So, so I have four of those. Here's a really pretty color if you wanted to do a sweater with it. And then I have the four of the Australia. This is all you need is love. So, and again, it's the same combination, 425 yards, 115 grams, 84 superwash merino and 16 stellina. I actually have one of these left. This is called, looks like ball. It's the only one I have left right now. I have to dye some more up. It is a big seller. I was really surprised and it came out of the, I think I was dying it right before uh, Fiona and came out of the dye pot and I just thought it looks like ball. This is what it looks like knit up. It is one of my favorites. I'm a very earth tone person. So yeah, so that is, there's only one of those in DK left. Oh, wait a minute. No, there is. You can tell there's a little bit of difference with some of them. Again, when you're an indie dyer, why you should always do helix knitting. These are pretty, these two are pretty consistent. And with this, it's a core method. So it's just meant a lot more of the black went on this one than these two. You can tell, I mean, they would still, if you were to do helix knitting, you would never know. So yeah, there is actually four of them available, which I did, I don't know how many I had, uh, I had blue face Lester, I had in fingering, I had the eco processed organic merino and I had DK and I probably had 20 in total of all of them. And yeah, so I have four of those left. This is something new I am doing. Downstairs right now I have uh, a scheme and this one is 80% blue face Lester and 20% merino. $32 again, but it's called No Dye Left Behind. And I use my skein now as my rag and I wipe up all my messes. So this one, look, there's a little bit of a brownish that was probably from Looks Like Fall. And there's a bit of green. It was probably from the 50 Shades of Green because it was right around that time. And maybe the, oh, no, 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 no. So it is really fun. No skein will be the same. <laughs> They're all totally unique. You don't know for sure what colors you are going to get into them. And I will, I will definitely continue. I did them for one fiber festival last year and they went like crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, people were coming back and asking me where they were. <laughs> and I was kind of shocked. I didn't think of it before. So yeah, so now... That's what I do. I've only got one left right now. There's another one downstairs in my dye room brewing. I usually leave it until, sometimes I leave it when it's not totally saturated. Other times I do it, I wait till it's fully saturated and then I just um, put the heat to it and set it. And yeah, so I think I, yeah, it's another blue face Lester I have downstairs. This is blue face Lester. This is in my Cosmopolitan. I did, um, Sorry, that's one of my hairs. Get that out of there. Um, what is it? <laughs> a little piece of me is in all my knitting. A little piece of me sometimes is in all my skeins. Um, isn't it true for us knitters? 
Um, so this is called Cosmopolitan. I did a kit one year and it was, what was it? Uh, happy hour. And it was six different colors and they were all named after a drink. And then I had the um, recipes for each of the drinks. So I still do Cosmopolitan. It's a fun pink. Uh, people that love pink love Cosmopolitan. And I don't have any, I think I have some pinks over. No, I don't even have any pinks left. My pinks go. Actually, I find it depends on the month. Sometimes it's like goes like crazy and other times they don't. But it would go with that. This is Wildflower. It's not up on my site. I just, I've got a bunch that I finished up again last night that I have to put back on. I'm working through them as I go. Um, this again is the Blue Face Lester. I love Blue Face Lester for my socks. If I, I've knit in everything I have, but I've knit in the uh, eco-processed organic merino, but I love the Blue Face Lester. I have to say my Blue Face Lester, I just, I don't know whether I don't wear, I think I wear them as much as the others, but they seem to really, um, the thickness hasn't changed. So I'm really impressed with them and happy with them. So I like my sock blue face Lester, but I do do them out and all. And I mean, these are, it, these are hardy too. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, some of my socks are quite old and they haven't gone through yet. Um, but some of them, but they are my, I don't know. I just like blue face Lester for socks. I feel like they're better, but they probably aren't. They're probably just as good with, yeah, I do have a lot with the Eco Process Merino and I wear them a lot. They are really comfy on. Uh, something new that I've started, it's not a good color. This is called Fallen For You. And it is 100% eco-processed organic merino. So I have started, I've got a sweater started and with this, and I really like it. It's a different, like it's just a two ply. So it's, I really like the, st the stitch definition. This is 50 shades of green, I believe. I don't have a label on this, but I have it printed off someplace. Um, and it, I just like the look of it. It just looks more rustic to me. You can see the flies. So here is calmly knitting in it. There you go. So I do have, like I said, I do have quite a few that I still have to get up. I've been working on them like crazy. Oh, here's another one done in it. You can see the flies there. Anyway, this is called um, Fairy Lights. It's a really popular color actually. And it's mostly all purples, but there's places where it's broken and you get a few other kind of colors in there, believe it or not. When you, different dyes give you different breakages. So, and this of course is one of my most popular. It's one of my first, and it's something I'll always have. It's called Gramps shirt. I took that out of the dye pot the first time. And it, as soon as I saw it, it reminded me of this shirt of my grandfather's. Anyone that's seen me talk before, I always talk about it. And it's always dear to my heart because yeah, it's kind of, after my grandfather um, and I love it. And it goes with anything. You can pair it with greens, compare it with grays. I don't have any blue blues. Here's a, this is a superwash merino. You can even have it with that. It's got so many little colors in it. It can really go with anything you want because there's even some hot use of pink in there. I don't know if you can see it right there, but it can really go with anything. So it's very versatile. 
I've only got one of the eco-processed organic merino and nylon left. Um, it's gorgeous. I love it. Um, I say I'm a lot. I can't stop that. I've got a sweater made out of this. If you look on my on my um, Instagram, I did Andrea Mary's everyday sweater in this. It's called Murray Harbor. Again, it was for a collection for, um, or sorry, Murray River. It was for a collection for my for the Prince Edward Island Fiber Festival, which never happened. This is a color that I'll definitely keep. This is very much me. It's like a pink blush, um, peach color. Like it's not like pink pink, but it's got like some softer hues that. So it's not a pink pink, but it's not. You can see the difference there. It's mu very much like a blush and yeah, and I love how it knits up and I still have some DK left of it. There's four skeins of it left there. And again, Knitting Calmly, it's a really popular color. This is with the sparkling Stellina. So put that back. So that's about all I have, but I still have to do, I wanna do a draw. So I'm gonna take down everybody's name really quickly. If you have any questions, um, I can answer them. I can come back to if you wanna see something. And, um, and I can answer them while I am writing everyone's name down for a draw. Is there any questions? None? Well, give me one moment here. while I do this as quick as I can. Sorry about this. I am drawing for stitch stoppers. So And I will give you a couple of options. Actually, I'll let you pick from any that are there. We'll just take them off the site as soon as you pick.
Do we see? Oh, it's Mary. So Mary, you won stitch markers. There are a couple that I don't have up yet. If you want to look online, I can show you some, um, or you saw the ones I showed you. So there's these green ones. I have the pink balls and the blue balls up, but I don't have the green balls up. And I have campers. And then I have these, which they will stay on, or at least a couple of them will stay on uh, a size one needle. I've tried them all and there's at, at least two in each package because they are for size two and up. But if you knit socks and on a size one needle, you will, um, these will work for you. And I'm also going to include, actually let's draw, let's do another little draw. I'll send it in an envelope. I've got a little Prince Edward Island label done up. Uh, if you want, these were done up. Well, I'm gonna get more, but I did them especially for the PEI Fiber Festival because we have the island and I've got more coming in for the 23 Canada Games that are here in a few weeks. And then the other side says, so I'll send one to Mary and I'm gonna draw again for one other person. I will just put that in a little envelope. Oops, Mary. Anne, Marie Anne, Mary Anne, I think it was supposed to be. So if you two want to, you said it in the chat. Uh, no, they're not crochet friendly. I do apologize. I, um, I have some, stitch stoppers that I will be putting on my site and those are crochet friendly because you can put them around your stitch. So Marianne and Mary, that's kind of um that's kind of neat that you're both so close in the names. If you guys want to get in touch with me and let me know what stitch markers you want and for and Marianne, if you don't want to just give me your address, I'll send you this. And like I said, you can just put it with the island if you like the island and you want to display it. So other than that, I am going to post the other stuff online now. Um, and so it'll be there if you want to purchase. Um, any other questions? Do we, did I get all the questions? Uh, the recording, uh, Eureka will have it on her YouTube channel. Oh, she already answered you that. So. No, oh, I'm not good at this. Did I lose you? There, I am really not technology. It's, it's so funny. I used to work in the IT field and I actually way back when, like I'm talking um, 1995 to 2000, probably a little bit. Before. I used to actually get people to take their computers apart online and change jumpers. And I was very technical, but once you get out of that world, you lose it all. It's, and you lose it so fast. And now with technology, I am so far behind. I didn't even get a cell phone until last summer when I needed to, to work my square for my different fiber festivals. Um, I had one before, but I was spending too much time on it. And when I stopped working, something had to give. So I got rid of my cell phone and got a home phone. But yeah, so yeah, so I'm not good with technology. So yes, everybody has to kind of bear with me when it has to come with 
everything takes me 10 times longer than anyone else because yeah, I even just to post something on Instagram, it takes me a long time. Half the time I lose it and then I have to go back. And yeah, I have been learning a lot and I'm getting better. But when I first started on this journey, wow. Yeah, I, I didn't realize how technically challenged I was. And I really am. So um, whoops, I just knocked over something. Anyway, that's okay. Nothing broke. Uh, so anyway, that is all I have for my show. We still have 10 minutes if anyone wants to see anything else or ask any questions. Oh, I will answer one question. Um, a new person that started dying and asked me the other day, they just asked. I don't know who they are. It was just, I guess, a customer, maybe. I don't know. They reached out to me and they asked, um, they keep filling their, their pots too full. So when they put the yarn in, it overflows. And is there anything you can do with that extra, um, like the water, so you can take it out and get it back into the yarn? When I start first, so anyone that's thinking about dying, I made that mistake myself. And I'm not sure if you understand. So you fill your pot with water and uh, depending on what I dye anyway, I have different ways that I do. Sometimes I put the yarn in and then I put the dye. Sometimes I put the dye in. And so I generally have the dye in and then I put my skeins in and kind of get them well blended. And I know where on my pot that the water has to stop for my maximum skeins. But when I first started doing it, I'd have it too full because your skeins are, sometimes I put them in dry. It depends on the technique that I want. Um, but most of the time I have them soaked because I want them to in the citric acid because you want it to absorb the, the dye evenly. And it's just, how I do it for most of it um but so what I used to do if you do start off and you filled it too full take some water out and put it into a jar beside or little basin beside it and then do your skeins and once you've exhausted all the dye that's in the pot and it's clear you can take that water out and then put the other back in now you're you might not get the same saturation on if it was all there, but when you're first starting out, at least that way you're not losing the dye and you're kind of keeping some of it. I just thought that was a really interesting question. And I thought I was the only one that did that at the start, but I'm sure everyone does. But yeah, you learn very quick where your pots can go to and do not fill below that. And you know how well you need your skeins wrung out or if you want them wetter, there's all different techniques that I see on YouTube is where I get a lot of um, different ideas and I try a lot of different things and it is so much fun to try different techniques. A lot of my sprinkles now I do with um, salt and pepper shakers and I find that keeps it. Mind you, the other downside of that, before I always measured and weighed everything out and I knew exactly what I had, now it's more of a Russian roulette. But in my dye journey, I have realized um, I'm just a little independent dyer. Um, and each batch is in some ways unique. I do try to get everything the exact same, but a lot of times it's really impossible because even the dyes, like there was one of my favorite colors, it was called Irish Moss. And when I got the dye, it was always like a red color or no, it was olive drab was the, what the color was called, but it dyed my Irish Moss. And it was like a red color and it was really neat to watch it um, soak through the, the skeins. And all of a sudden the dye started being like a purple color and totally different. Like before it was a nice, even almost like an Irish moss. Now it is, you can see all the little speckles. Like I could probably get them more even, but this was 
the same amount of mixing that I do. Like there are some dyes, if you ever want to try it, there's some dyes um, that you want to mix really well. So it's well saturated, but I like a lot of times a little bit not. So it's little, um, you get a little bit more breakage for depending on what I'm dying. But yeah, I am not an expert. That is, <laughs> um, you're, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Eureka. Eureka? No. Yes, Eureka. Eureka. Yes. That is, you're the expert here, not me. <laughs> so I play. You have it as a business. I am just a little independent dyer. And yeah, that was, it took me about a year to realize I do the best I can. I get it. So they're all is equal. And, but I do not stress anymore. Because, yeah, I'm not the big business name where you have to have a whole bunch, all of the same um, colors. Generally, when I do different runs of colors, I can still get the same pretty close. Well, I mean, different colors on different blends, but those are pretty close. But one has uh, one's the eco processed, one's a super washed with nylon and the other one's just the eco press so it's a little bit different which is normal for your different blends but they are still pretty close and that's two totally different schemes so I do I do do pretty well if I do say so myself but different runs for me will give you a few different like those are different runs you can see the difference and that could have just been that one of these schemes got more saturated than the other. But yeah, so I never, I never used to stress or I always used to stress, but like all of those are pretty even. So yeah, so that's my story. I have fun. I enjoy doing it and I love sharing it. So I will end with that. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the presentations. We have Eureka next and then we have someone new I haven't seen before um, after her and I can't wait to see that one. Did you answer the question about US shipping? I may have missed it. Um, US shipping, so I just upped it. It is it is $20 to ship to the US and that's $20 Canadian. And you have to remember all my prices are Canadian as well. So right now you got a pretty good dollar. <laughs> um, let me tell you, cause I know from buying patterns, patterns are getting really expensive for us Canadians. Um, but it's $20 to ship it or $200 and it's free shipping. Okay, any other questions oh. for Mandy? I forgot to give you my discount code. Oh, let me just get that. Uh, it is minus 45 out. So um, the minus sign four five O-U-T. So I was trying to think up a code and that's what it is outside my house. So that's the code, keep warm. <laughs> And that is on all my yarns. Oh, thank you. You're is so it sweet. minus a symbol or minus? Yeah, the minus symbol, just minus four five O U T. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And if you forget it, just message me and I'll give it to you. No problem at all. You can message me on, you can email me at www red island fiber or message me at red island fiber at gmail.com or you can message me in instagram same or facebook again i'm the same i've got a group and a page on facebook so thank you for everybody for watching and the two winners get a hold of me and we'll get those out in the mail when i can go outside again because i'm not going out in this weather
hopefully Monday it's supposed to go up to minus one, I think. So that's great. 